the dark lord of the earth. That yeah, was let's go slow here. Explain the demiurge. So the demiurge was one way to understand what are the spiritual forces that are involved with taking all these non-physical spiritual beings and spiritual energies from the divine world and taking them through a series of alchemical steps to crystallize them into physical reality for us to actually, as a spiritual being, move into a physical body, for the physical earth to be formed out of higher divine powers. Mm -hmm. And so there was the understanding that there were certain spiritual beings involved in that process of physical crystallization. And one way it was described by the Gnostics was as the demiurge. That's a particular type of spiritual being involved in the crystallization process. And again, this was seen somewhat differently by different groups. So my understanding of this is that there's, and this comes from my own journey experience, from conversations with Matthias De Stefano, lots of different sources, but ultimately there's the clear, pure light yes. of source, yes. right? But it's undifferentiated. It's like, it's the, it's the moment of the Big Bang where everything is just all pure potentiality, homogenous in its, in its form at that. And, and astrophysicists will say that the universe was about the size of the tip of your finger. You know, and it's just all just pure packed white light, pure light, like the source light, all the all color, the all light, the all sound, and then it differentiates. And then the creation actually came from creating prisms of distortion, which actually, and distortion is an interesting word, but it actually is more like a prism that just refracts the light so that now instead of the pure light, just like you do with actual light, you can use a prism to break, break it into a rainbow. Yes. Right? Even a drop of water, that's what a, that's what a rainbow actually is. A yeah. Water, it's a refracting the light so that now you see seven colors instead of seeing just light, just the sun. Yes. It's not like, wow, seven colors, holy shit, it's beautiful. <laughs> right? So it's like, yeah. it's, the distortion is like the creation of the prism. So is that accurate to say that the demiurge is like the creation of these different prisms that, that refract, the, refract the pure light? I think from the Gnostic perspective, they would see it more as the Demiurge is part of a later stage of alchemical crystallization into physical matter because it goes through multiple stages. So if we look at it from probably the easiest way to understand it today, the system that we use to understand different planes of creation and this alchemical step-by-step -step process today in the West is basically from the Theosophist. So we start with the divine plane. At the divine plane, everything is one. Everything's a unity. Nothing's differentiated. Source light. Source light, pure, clear light. Mm -hmm. And then the next step is to move from, in sacred numerology, from the one to the two. And so we go from where everything is one and unity to a differentiation into yin and yang, differentiation into masculine and feminine. And that's where you get... Polarity. The, absolutely. Polarity gets created. But at its most fundamental stage... Polarity is not polarity of the physical plane. It is polarity of beings. It's polarities of consciousness, polarities of energy. And that's where we get in the Indian tradition the idea of the Shiva and Shakti mm -hmm. as the actual higher spiritual personification of the male and female, which then have to be reunified in tantric work to go back to the highest divine clear light plane. From that spiritual plane, we're beginning to differentiate out first the pure polarities, then we go into the deeper aspects of the prism, where all of the inherent potential for difference then gets manifested out. And you then go from spiritual plane to the causal plane, where it would be understood that through our actions, we create our karma. We have particular patterns in our life, certain things we have as potential, certain things that our teleos is drawing us toward mm -hmm. to manifest as a fully awakened, activated siddha or power. And then from the causal plane to the mental and the emotional, sometimes one or both of those referred to as the astral, and then into the vitality or etheric chi, ki, prana mm -hmm. level of pure life energy. That forms then the pattern in energy that then is the blueprint for the crystallization of physical matter, the physical plane. Different beings and processes are involved with every stage of that alchemical movement. And then the demiurge is involved at that last stage of the actual crystallization of the energy pattern into the physical matter 
whether it's our physical body or whether it's the physical earth we're living in. So, so the urge feels like it's a desire, like something's being drawn forth. Like there's a, is, is, so is urge the right word? Like we're, we're, we're drawn forth into this by some force. We could certainly see it that way. In the original language, the demiurge, it may not be as involved with the English concept of, of urge, but certainly it was understood that there was always a desire nature involved in it because there would be no life if we didn't have the desire to unify with the, the other uh-huh. and then bring forth new life, which only happens through the alchemical merger of opposites. It's always the case in higher alchemy that it's bringing together the two opposite polarities in the right way that opens up the gateway to the divine plane, back to the source light. And so this is the, the key to everything. It's going to be at the first level, a kind of subconscious desire, a subconscious urge that pulls us toward whatever it is we need for that process to take its place. Then as we become self-aware, we illuminate that and we're conscious of it, which means we can work with it in more conscious ways to help to develop our own, as the Rosicrucians would say, the seven red roses or the potential siddhas in our own energy body. Mm. So we're not just an animal being pulled towards something through subconscious urges, although that in itself is something natural and needed in the process. But as we become more conscious, we can bring more light, more love, more awareness into the process to help us develop ourselves into our fully awakened, activated form. So is the demiurge then value neutral in that it's it's creating all of the positive aspects of love, truth, beauty, transformation, and also all of the negative aspects of distortion, delusion, you know, separation, all of that as well? Is it is it value neutral, the demiurge? Is it just more a force of creation? In many aspects of the Gnostic tradition, it's viewed as something negative. It's viewed as a force that pulls us down into darkness and some type of over-manifestation, over-materialization. But again, this is seen differently by different uh, groups and and sects within things. Like when we use a term like Gnostic, it, it actually pertains to many different groups and, right. and teachers and people having direct experience of it. So some may see it as a more negative thing, and you can find Gnostic teachings that really see the demiurge as a type of opposition force that we have to overcome. But it could be seen by others as an absolutely essential part of the process of a full alchemical movement from the clear light unity space through all the different planes into crystallization on the physical plane, which actually gives us the potential for freedom. And this then leads to one of the most important concepts of the Rosicrucians that I help think makes sense of the whole process, which is one of the most advanced Rosicrucian teachers ever to go public was uh, Rudolf Steiner. Mm. And so Steiner had the idea that if you look at the Gnostic teachings about the spiritual beings that are around us all the time that then developed into esoteric Christianity. Uh, we have an understanding of multiple ranks of angelic beings above us, mm-hmm. angels, archangels, archai, etc. Yeah. Exactly. They all have different stages of consciousness, stages of development, different powers, things that they do. But there's the understanding that just as they have names that give them their identification for what their whole process is at that alchemical level, The human being's alchemical name is spirits of love and freedom. That's the Rosicrucian concept. That's the two key polarities that, according to the Rosicrucians, we're here on the physical plane to try to master. 